10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, liftoff. From the Beyond Ringside Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Number of different things I want to say right now. I will say welcome into Beyond Ringside Back to Basics, home of the 10 count, and I'll leave it at that for right now. Maybe a little bit of a little bit of an identity shift on Tuesdays. Never know what's gonna happen around here. Fast Eddie Lane, live behind the control panel on this Tuesday night thing. It is one minute after the top of the hour on this 16th day of December. Nine days till that immortal thing we call December 25th. You know, National Pumpkin Pie Day. Also, word going around, and I'm getting in on the word, to, uh, well, I happen to know that Robert Cosper, the host of Cause and Effect, is of the Jewish persuasion. So, for all of our um, Jewish brothers and sisters, happy Hanukkah. The Festival of Lights and all of the above. I am not that well-versed on it, so I don't know exactly what I should be saying and what I should not be saying right now. And that's legit, <laughs> as that is what they call a shoot, kids. Uh, first off, thank you to everybody who tuned in this past weekend for Beyond Ringside Live. I'm thinking that most of us hit predictions kind of, sort of, in the middle. Um, I know that I took a little bit of a beating on some of the NFL predictions we put out this past Saturday on the showcase. Also, to everybody who is over on Stitcher, Spreaker, um, iHeartRadio, Thank you for catching last week's edition of Back to Basics uh, with very special guest, the authority, Dave Wills. Had a great time in that conversation. And coming up this evening, in about 13 minutes from right now, slated to be joined by Tammy Joe. A lot of friends in the Birmingham metropolitan area are going to know who I'm talking about, and she's coming on to let us know about a very special event that's going to be taking place this Saturday night. Also, coming up at the top of the hour, slated to be joined by Gene Jackson, Donnie Primetime, and Ace Haven as Pro South Wrestling is holding their sixth anniversary show this coming Friday night in Piedmont, Alabama. It's going to be a busy weekend, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So for everybody who is getting into the holiday spirit, bah humbug. (laughs) I'm going to get so much heat for that, but you know something? I'm used to it. It's been a weird season for me, and I always have what's called, and I'm going to go ahead and run the risk of saying it in public, the December nightmare. And it's really not Christmas-related, kind of, sort of. It's just, you know, normally for me, if anything is going to explode, it's going to be in the month of December. So we're halfway through, effectively, at this point. And speaking of halfway through... I'm not halfway through, but I'm about all the way over some of the comments that I've seen. Now, for those who have me on Facebook and Twitter on my personal accounts, um, and for those who don't, I don't just open up my personal. My, Twitter's one thing. I'm, I, I cut loose a little bit more over on Twitter. And on Facebook, there is a Facebook.com slash Fast Eddie Lane, and that is me. But there is also my personal page. And... I opened up some commentary that's been met with some mixed results in front of the scenes and behind the scenes. And I'm just going to, I'm going to lay it out there like this as it pertains to TLC from this past Sunday night. I made the comment that I couldn't put it in my top five things of the weekend for a valid reason. I went Sunday to Sunday and granted I I could have gone Monday to Sunday, which is the law of logic. But considering the fact that Final Battle took place when it did, I decided to go and make it Sunday to Sunday. And Final Battle, as well as NXT TakeOver, are what live events, pay-per-views should be. Now, before anybody decides to jump on me about this, I'm going to go and lay it out there. 
I don't call TLC a pay-per-view anymore. It is a live event on a subscription service. That is the way that I look at it. And Wick's going to say it's not a live event due to the fact that he's not booked on it. But, you know, Wick, <laughs> it works that way sometimes. I'm just, I'm I'm very much over what a lot of people are putting out there and calling it an opinion. Espousing your opinion normally entails more than just saying, that sucked. Why did it suck? Give a rationale. I've made the statement on more than one occasion that you never, ever, while in business, underestimate the intelligence quotients of your listeners, your watchers, your patrons. That gets met with mixed reactions from a number of different promoters. Never underestimate the intelligence of the people you're hoping to attract into your business. There are some who fall right into that category because they're the first ones to sit back and just rant. And then you have those who will not only say what they have on their mind, but how they arrived at that conclusion. These are the people that I pay attention to. Because if you can lay out a linear logical methodology for arriving at your, at your destination for your thought process, I'm good. I'll listen seven days a week. We can debate it too. Because I'm going to have the same linear logical thought pattern. One of the reasons why I took a mark off the TLC show, like I said, it was barely a B minus, could have been a C plus. The ending to the main event. You always hear me say the last thing you see is the first thing you remember. To me, the ending was unrealistic. Yes, I know it's pro wrestling. Yes, I know it's sports entertainment. Yes, I know it's Vince McMahon and his 26 plus person creative team. Woohoo! Whoop de damn to do. But you have to lay something out there in a manner that people are going to sit back and say, that could happen. Remember when they went back and revisited the last man standing match between Cena and Wyatt? And Cena um, slammed him through the cabinet and then dumped another cabinet on top of him? Well, yep, that kept him down for a 10 count. That could happen. People get caved in under furniture. Just ask the chair in my office how many times it wants to drop me out of it on my fat ass. <laughs> Which is the truth. It really is. They took way too long in the setup for that television connector to pop the pyro. And if you noticed where the pop came from. Now, I'm AR. I am very AR. I'm also very OC. And I will take the time to go back and look at something. I dissect things. Sometimes a lot more than I need to. And I understand this. That's my personal hell. It really is. Sometimes I will take things at face value. Other things, I can't. I take the athleticism that is put forth inside that ring at more than face value because I know how hard a lot of these people work. You have some who try to cruise, but you have so many who bust their tails in the gym, in workouts, in in preparation, in training, that I'm not going to take away from them personally. So if anybody thought that when I made a comment about situations that took place over the last week, the week that was in wrestling and football and in, in, in mixed martial arts, boxing, anything that I've made a comment on, uh, you're wrong. That's why case point scenario. I've made commentary about Jay Cutler the quarterback for the Chicago Bears. I'm not making comments about Jay Cutler as an individual. I would never do that. I don't know Jay Cutler. All I can base an opinion on is his performance on the field. I felt horrible for him last night at the post-game presser when 
three questions were asked. And after that, the media basically said, okay, we're done with you. And Cutler just had his, Cutler looked like he kicked his poodle. Legit. If you don't believe me, go back and look. Three random questions. And after that, no, got nothing else for you. But the thing about it is, this is where I have an issue because I don't care if you're Jay Cutler. I don't care if you're Tony Romo. I don't care if you're if you're Brett Favre. I don't care if you're Joe Montana. When you have a situation like that, you have to be willing to open up and just let it rip. Okay, I screwed up. Okay, I mistimed. Okay, I threw an interception. Hey, they threw diff- they they threw different looks than I was ready for. I was wrong. I was right. I overreacted. I underreacted. Lay something out there that people can wrap their heads around and sink their teeth into. I'm not saying Jay Cutler should have cut a damn promo last night. I'm just saying Jay Cutler could have done a hell of a lot more to stand up for himself and his team. Because you've got a lot of people who are looking at people like him and, you know, Romo's shaking the cobwebs a little bit. He's shaking the skeletons a little bit. Because the fact that he has stepped up this year and the rest of the team has stepped up this year. And I'm just going to go ahead and sit back and say this for uh, football fans who, especially if you watch the Dan Patrick show and you caught Shea from Ir- um, the Shea from Irving little call in earlier. I've had, a ch- I've had a chance to listen to a couple of his um, little gimmicks on his website. And, you know, he's entertaining. He's fun. Um, I don't think I could ever open the bar as far as he does before I take a microphone. I've done that once or twice, and it's been a complete and total F up. That's something I promised myself I'd never do again. But, you know, we're held accountable to our own standard. And those who hold us to a different standard are looking at something else. I know I hopscotched this, and I did it for a reason. Because one of the criticisms that I hear on occasion is the factor of how, like on this past Saturday morning, Hitman and I will start on one topic and then we'll jump here, jump here, jump here, jump here, and finally come back around to wrap up the original topic. That's something we've been guilty of for the longest time. We'll we'll get on a tangent. And our compass will say, slow down, turkeys. Almost said something else. Sorry. Hashtag hell damn ass. Hmm. And right now, Angie's sitting back going, yeah, and hashtag human verb needs to straighten it out. Yeah, he will. But seriously, you have to understand everything that, okay, I'm not going to say that if you've never stepped foot inside of a wrestling ring or inside of a cage or inside of a boxing ring or onto a football field or baseball field, that you have no capacity for understanding what happens and the dynamics therein and that are involved. I will never say that. Some people do a good enough job of saying it to where I don't have to. I'm saying that there are times that you have to sit back and really break down the level of suckage involved. You know, there were people on social media last night that were up in arms about the fact that Brock Lesnar didn't have the title with him when he came down to confront Chris Jericho. Come on. That was totally, it's like, look, who cares? And then when he came back out later in the show with the title over his shoulder, everybody's going, oh, goody, there's the belt. Hey, it's back. We see it on TV now. Yeah, you can take the picture off the milk carton now. You really can. So let's put the world in proper perspective. There is a way to look at things, but sometimes you have to look deeper than the surface which is also the same way that you need to put out your opinions when you base them. Sometimes a one or two word answer is a great thing. I can take a lesson from that. Other times to really effectively get your point across. It's always a good idea to take the time lay out in, I'm not going to say in perfect terminology, but I'm going to say, Lay out in a method that makes you look intelligent, educated, knowledgeable, and sensible. And then afterwards, go off into a rant. That's fine. (laughs) Trust me on that one. I've done it before. And I'll do it a hundred more times. Trust me on that one. Folks, tell you what, we're going to go to a quick break. When we come back, 
good friend, Tammy Joe, going to be joining us right here. Back to Basics continues right after this. Hey, half heads, it's a three time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Scrap by Anna Pierce. And just like me, you are locked in beyond ringside. <laughs> On a crazy Tuesday night, 21 minutes after the hour, welcome back into Back to Basics, home of the 10 count. Magic City Motor Mouth, fast study lane behind the control panel. Thank you to everybody listening in live this evening through BeyondRingside.com, through TuneIn Radio, through Ustream, through Shoutcast, WinApp, and all the various ways that you can pick us up live. And also, don't forget, if you've got TuneIn Radio's app for um, all major platforms, you can also listen when we take it from live back to um, programming. Recent episodes and interviews in full rotation, 24-7, right here on Beyond Ringside Radio. I'd like to welcome in one of our new best friends, and I will say a good friend of the family. Four wheels? Eight wheels? There's another wheels joke I'm going to make a little bit later. Tammy Joe, glad to have you on board tonight. Thank you for having me. Very excited to be on air with you. Now, for those, a lot of people, I've made the statement in the first segment that a lot of people are going to recognize you, especially by face, because the identity has changed just a little bit. I used to, um, I started the local Birmingham Roller Derby League, and I did it under the pseudonym uh, Dixie Thrash. Right. Um, I skated with TCR, I coached them, was president, all kinds of fun things that make you want to pull your hair out for (laughs) eight years. And after that eight years, I decided I sort of wanted to go rogue and go independent, and with doing so i just went to my real name it sort of seemed to fit it was a little bit more um i don't want to say professional but you know hi my name's tammy joe it works there you go and you got the tammy joe thing working so it sounds very southern bellish right it you know dixie was also southern and tammy joe it's not very far from it just a a frog bump butt away or something like that has some more southernness to it i want to ask I've had a chance to speak to different people who represent different teams and leagues over the years, but everybody always has a different story. What attracted you first and foremost to going on wheels? Um, I grew up very sporty kind of person, volleyball, softball. I loved track. I loved running. Um, I went to college. I started a four square league, which sounds kind of silly and kitty, but like a lot of us walked away bloody at the end of a good four square night. Um, picked up a few things in college, but then after I graduated, there wasn't a whole lot of anything going on. Everything you did was maybe you and your friends meeting up, playing a game of volleyball at the park, something like that, but nothing really team oriented. And I missed a lot of that camaraderie that you have with teammates. I missed just the physical aspects of it that, you know, going to a practice and really pushing yourself. And I went out to a lot of my friends are a little IT nerd. And Austin was a big booming city for that at the time. And I went out to Austin and was visiting one of my best friends. And they had roller derby going on. And I've always been a pretty solid skater. And I was like, oh, yeah, that looks awesome. Went and watched it and decided there's no reason why I couldn't bring that back to Birmingham and start doing that. I got back to Birmingham. I contacted a girl uh, with the league closest to us in Huntsville. And she was like, yeah, come on up. I'll show you the ropes. Started there, and a couple of months after that, came back to Birmingham and got a group of girls. Our first meeting, we had like 45-plus people show up, so it was just building from there. Um, And again, it was mostly about having something to do to fulfill all those aspects that I got, you know, while I was in college playing sports, while I was in high school. It's camaraderie. It's a lot of discipline, um, specifically pushing yourself physically. <clears throat> and, I mean, I've enjoyed it. I've been doing it for almost 10 years. This will be my 10th season coming up. Um, I've had several surgeries, several things here and there, sprained and torn, but it's part of sports, and, you know, you could do that walking outside oh, your yeah. front door, so why not do it, do it doing something you love? Well, let me go ahead and lay this one out there if I could, because I first became a fan of a different style of roller derby when I was younger. Of course, watching the yeah. uh, watching the days of the L.A. T-Birds and everything that would happen on that on shows of that ilk. And then all of a sudden, everything kind of like went off the way of the Yellow Speckled Dodo Bird. Well, a few years ago, um, bumped into somebody online and it's like, well, you know, we've got this roller derby league here in Birmingham. It's like, what? Really? Hold on. Hold the door. <laughs> and my curiosity got the best of me. 
And lo and behold, courtesy of some mutual friends, um, I started attending the um, the team here in Birmingham. Their shows out at the Zamora Shrine Temple, and mm-hmm. Im- immediate fan because. Yes. Go ahead. Ten years ago, um, in Austin, when I first saw you know the Derby that I saw, a group of girls had decided that they wanted to take roller derby and keep a lot of the fun stuff, like you know, uh, some fun clothing. Um, maybe some cute names, things like that. They wanted to keep the fun theatrical aspects of that part, but actually turn it into a real sport. Right. So it's kind of like if a bunch of do-it-yourself punk rock kids went and started their own sport. Um, <laughs> it was a bunch of girls with a bunch of tattoos, a bunch of girls with, you know, doctrines and majors and fields, um, and they just wanted to get together and kind of have fun with it, and it caught on, and... Pretty much every country in the world now almost has a roller derby team. They actually just had the Roller Derby World Cup in Dallas. Um, USA walked away with a gold or skated away with a gold, of course. But, um, you know, there are a lot of countries that participated in that. And pretty much any metropolitan city that you have in the United States is going to have a derby league. Now, take this as someone who, like I said, started watching back in the days of the LA T-Birds when you knew that it was a different style altogether. <laughs> and when I first started watching what um, what they were doing in these bouts, I'm sitting back going, holy crap, these people are going to get hurt. Wow, I can't. And it's, it, okay, I'm not going to say train wreck, but I'm just going to sit back and say fixated because the competitive, yeah. the competitive nature, everybody out there is like, they have this one look in their eyes and I want to win is an understatement. Yeah, um, but also, you know, it depends on what's pushing you and what your drive is. I always, when I was coaching, gave my girls like some type of goal. Like this year, we want to beat this person who beat the pants off of us last year. Right. Um, And once you start, when it really is full physical contact sport, it only builds throughout the game. You know, there's only so many times you can get gently hit with the shoulder before you really get set (laughs) off and you want to really annihilate them with your shoulder. Close line. Um, it builds that positive, I want to say positive aggression um, in you, and it's a great release for it. So That's one of the words I was looking for a little bit earlier. And uh, for a lot of people who participate in this, I can only imagine exactly how deep that release really runs. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like um, Paxil on eight wheels, I guess, would probably be a really <laughs> haha like way that. to put it. I like that. It makes me a much nicer person, I can tell you that. <laughs> now, in addition to working with the league here in Birmingham, you've also, and you and I spoke a little bit um, on Facebook earlier this afternoon, and you were letting me some of the things, and I'm sitting back going, holy cow. <laughs> and you have, I, go ahead. No, yeah, um, you know, I'm not active with the local league, the Credit City Rollers here in Birmingham. But I am still very active in the derby community. Um, I participated in the first uh, USA Roller Sports International Roller Derby bout in Chicago this year. I actually skated with Team Guadalajara. Um, that was pretty amazing and awesome. I participated in the USA Roller Sports Nationals. I skated with uh, Chicago. We placed fifth in the tournament. Um, and then just recently, this past November, we there's a new tournament that everybody started where the top 20 of each state come together down in Daytona. They've called it State Wars. And I was the coach, captain, and skater for Team Alabama. Very cool. I mean, yeah. I, no, it really is because, you know, I, as a kid, I'm sitting back and I'm very active on roller skates all the way through probably my late 20s. And it was I came out to a tryout. I b- believe they were doing a tryout workout for TCR one time myself. Uh, Mark Bowman from Beyond Ringside Live. Chase Pearson from Magic City Online. We came out and we put on skates. And that would probably be the first time that I'd been on skates in well <laughs> over 10 to 15 years. So it's like I'm sitting back going, yeah, ankles, knees, thighs are going to be killing me in the morning. And Yeah, it is something that you absolutely you know, endurance is just a very, very basic part of it. Right. And then you just, you have to build up that muscle memory. You have, you know, it's a lot that goes into derby. It's not just show up, put on some um, gear and get out there. You actually, everything has to be trained. And if it's not trained and trained right, you're going to get injured. You're going to get hurt. 
And again, just even with the endurance, if you go out there and you can't handle what's being given to you, you're going to get hurt even quicker. So uh, let me it definitely you. takes a lot to keep up with. Yeah, I can only imagine. I, I genuinely, I can only imagine. Now, I would <laughs> like to ask, as far as marketing, because this is something, you know, because marketing is one of the things that I've always dabbled in. I've never been that serious about it, except for maybe about four and a half years. And then I realized, no, I can't do this. Uh, not in this office. <laughs> Give me, get, let, let me work from home. I'll be fine. Let me get in a bigger office. I'll be fine. Don't cubicle me. Um, I'm one of those weird birds. Trust me. When you're when you're trying to set out for a marketing campaign for a roller derby team and league, what is one of the first things that genuinely crosses into your mind as far as the demographics go? Um, you know, 10 years ago, very different than what it is today. Um, 10 years ago, we knew that we were reaching out into our um, DIY groups, our music-heavy groups. We were It was a very specific demographic. These days, it expands like outrageously through these social, um, economic, everything kind of demographic. It can, these days, it really, you're getting into people who actually like sports, um, which is a very, very huge awesome thing for me starting where I did 10 years ago where you know you had to you didn't have to but we did play up a little bit of fishnets a little bit of skirts get a fan base in there yay we got that and then you actually get people in there and they're seeing the real sport and they enjoy that too um these days you know most girls are wearing compression pants uh compression shorts there's not a whole lot of skirts involved at all anymore um there's still obviously a good many tattoos but you know you walk down the street and see that um, I think the demographic has expanded exponentially. Um, I don't think there is a certain socio-demographic that Derby is hitting these days. I honestly think it's just uh, your whatever your average sports group would be. People who are interested in seeing sports, people who have money to be able to put into it, um, you know, things like that. I think also Derby girls are their best fans. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, even like with the World Cup, like I, I know many, 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 many people who went out to Dallas to watch that. So, I don't know. It would be really hard to pinpoint it specifically without doing like a statistical survey. But I, I can tell you that there is a gigantic leap from what kind of used to be the norm to what is the norm these days. Now, one of the things that I've noticed, and this is something that you reminded me of earlier today in our conversation is that not only as a league and as a team and as a sport, but also as an individual, such as yourself personally, you've always believed in giving back. Yeah. Um, when I started TCR, we had such an awesome, awesome group of skaters. Um, we very much were a secondary family. And, you know, it's just that camaraderie, that team bonding that happens. And we I was super lucky that everybody I was skating with had a really big heart um, and wanted to help. And so it's just something we started out doing immediately. And since our since the inception of Birmingham Derby, I've done a charity bout every year. Um, last year, I think we did a charity bout for the Shining Diamonds. They're a special needs cheerleading group, and they're so awesome and so amazing. And I wish I could have gotten in as my halftime. But um, we raised some money for them. They had a national tournament they were going to. Um, we've done, uh, gosh, uh, Rape Response, um, Lighthouse. Um, we've done several large charities, the Greater Birmingham Humane Society one year. I think we raised 5000 for them. Um, we, we just try to pick and choose, and we try to, you know, do a different charity every year. And now that I'm an independent skater, I'm super lucky that I have all these connections because I can, I can still do that and still put it on. Um, I think in June, I decided that I wanted to give myself a headache and a heart attack and do a charity belt, and I contacted Zamora. I was like, hey, would you guys be interested in this? And they were like, let me get back to you. <laughs> and I was like, oh, they're not going to want to. And they called me back within about 10 minutes, and they were like, yes, here's your date. So I was super, super excited that they were, you know, as happy and as ecstatic as I was. So I'm pretty lucky in that aspect. 
Now, do me a favor. Um, one of the things we've discussed, and this is something that people can find out about, not only through um, the different forms of social media, but especially on the Facebook page itself. Um, for those who don't know, please tell everybody about what Southeastern Subs is. Southeast Subs is um, a group of skaters that I've started uh, that is kind of a database of sort of your, well, you can actually put it into different levels, your top-notch skaters, your beginner skaters. A lot of small cities have a lot of trouble um, building up their derby. Um, It's sometimes, you know, injuries, sometimes girls don't stick around. So instead of canceling these bouts that they've already put money and advertising and just signed a contract with another league, um, yet they only have 10 skaters out of a roster of 14, they can go to this database, the Southeast Subs, and ask, hey, I need one jammer and three blockers. Um, Or if a team has a team that has canceled on them, um, the Southeast Subs, we can grab 14 girls from that and then go and play them as the Southeast Subs. It's... Again, the best way I think to describe it is a collective database of skaters, um, skaters who are willing to help out, skaters who love derby, skaters who are like, choose me, choose me, throw me in the mix anytime and, you know, any place. Um, it's pretty pretty awesome. It's been pretty successful. This is its first year in complete um, form, and we, I think we helped out two leagues who had complete cancellations on them. So, again, I'm when you spend a lot of money that maybe your league doesn't already have on all these bout advertising and flyers and just getting the stuff, the supplies to put it on, it really matters to have to cancel your bout. And, you know, I've been in that before, even with, when I was with Birmingham. And it's just very, very, very difficult to put a tiny bank account in trouble, you know, yeah. to add more trouble to it. So it's been really, really positively recepted. Um, and again, it's something that I can work under, like for this charity belt, and have it be something that people know the name of, and not just "Hey, Jimmy Joe wants skaters." <laughs> now, just out of curiosity, I know of about five or six different teams or different leagues that are running around the southeastern U.S. But for those who don't, how many different teams, um, so to speak, are there per se within the general southeastern U.S.? Tennessee, Mississippi. <laughs> oh. Goodness. Again, any metropolitan area is going to have a derby league. You're looking at in Alabama, Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, Enterprise. Um, there's also the Ian the Luger girls. Also, the there's some girls trying to get a league together around the Gulf region. Um, <clears throat> Georgia has Atlanta, Athens, Macon, Marietta. Um, they have tons. It's Again, any city that has over a <laughs> hundred population, they're going to have some derby girls in it. Really? Um, yeah. And Tennessee also is very heavy. Uh, Nashville, Clarksville, Memphis, uh, uh, I can't even think of them all. Uh, Johnson City. Um, it's, again, <clears throat> any place where there are males and or females wanting to skate, I guarantee you they have a derby league or they're driving an hour to a derby league. I would, if I had to put a guesstimate on it in Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, we'll put Florida in there too. You're looking at well over probably 300 leagues, maybe 400. I didn't know it ran that deep. Holy cow. Yeah, and there are even, like, there are little tiny cities that are trying, you know. Um, I didn't even mention Dunlap, uh, Tennessee, or the North Georgia All-Stars. They're based, uh, I can't even remember the little city that they are, but there's, like, eight of them. And they get together and they skate Cookville, Tennessee. That's another tiny, tiny city putting together uh, some derby. But, you know, it's it's this passion that draws everybody. And... When you love something, you love it, and it it's working. You know, it, it's giving a lot of people uh, something to focus on and something positive to have a goal towards. So, then do me a favor, and I'll say this off camera or off air <laughs> just as quickly as I'll say it on air. Facebook dot com slash Beyond Ringside. Facebook dot Facebook dot com slash Beyond Ringside Live. Now the the fan page I'm still working to try to build the numbers on, but the friends page keeps around five thousand on it at any given point in time. Do me a favor, spread the word through the network. They are more than welcome to post live upcoming event information on either of our pages anytime. 
I will do that. They will love that. Um, you know, Derby Derby people are hams. We like to see our stuff being, you know, <laughs> put out there. It's it's exciting. Again, I'm very appreciative for you letting me eat up your airtime. Um, well, let me cut you off for a second because I'm I, I'm Birmingham born and bred. I mean, Alabama's my home. Central Alabama's been my home with the exception of maybe about six years when I lived out of state. And this is also, for me, one of the reasons why I originally started Beyond Ringside back in 97 is to try to help keep a spotlight on things that not everybody may know about and to try to get that exposure for people. Because, like I said, yeah. before I first found out about um, about TCR and then found out about some of the other teams that I discovered around the Southeast, I'm sitting back going, look, I enjoy the hell out of this, and I wish more people knew about it. That's one of the reasons why it's like I would always try to make it a point for someone with whether it be Birmingham or whether it be Nashville or whether it be the Gulf Coast region. I think Panama City, I had somebody on with the, um, one mm-hmm. time before about four years ago. And that's like because – Everybody, you've got a ton of sports talk stations out there, and I'm going off the beaten path for a hot second. So bear with me, kids. You got a ton of sport. <laughs> you got a ton of sports talk stations out there, internet based. I mean, satellite and terrestrial that talk about football, that talk about baseball, that talk about basketball, and you've got so many other things out there that people can do that are a great way for families, friends hang out, goof off, cut up, have fun, discover something new, and it's going to be something that's affordable that they can yep. get that they can put the crack pipe as a remote control down and get out of the house for a little while and have some fun. That's why when I saw this it's like I've got to get in touch. <laughs> Absolutely. And again, you know, Derby is family friendly. I'm not sure how many people you know what people the aspects of derby are these days but one of the most awesome things are little kids coming up to you and asking you for their autographs like you know you just got done laying some smack down on someone for a good hour and here's this little girl you know about to make you weep and drop to your knees asking for your autograph so i i super encourage bringing you know kids out they enjoy it um it's a it's a, it's a good family environment too you know it's safe it's enclosed so and this is one of the other things. What two of the things we three things we cover on a regular basis? There are basis foundations: pro wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, as well as other things. And I I can pretty much guarantee you that a lot of pro wrestling fans, a lot of MMA fans, and a lot of boxing fans, contact sports fans, are going to genuinely be able to appreciate if they get out of the house and go check out a um, go check out about sometime. And a perfect time. I, go ahead. I would hope so. I would hope so. I I you know I don't want to disagree. I. I can knock a girl a good 20 feet with my shoulder on skates going 17 miles per hour. So <laughs> I think I've seen you do that before. <laughs> and yeah, it's, uh, it's my favorite thing to hear the crowd go, ooh, and I'm like, I know, right? <laughs> and one of the perfect times to put down that remote, get away from the computer, get away from the TV, get out of the house for a little while and have some fun is going to be this Saturday night in Birmingham, Alabama. It's December the 20th. At the Zamora Shrine Temple, as the Southeast Subs Roller Derby is hosting a very special charity night. And let me see, doors are going to open at 7 o'clock p.m., right? Doors open at 6, bout oh, starts at 7. Thank you. <laughs> the Harlem Globe, the Harlem Globetrotters are our halftime. Um, I'm pretty stoked about that. Now, and I've it- got skaters, um, top skaters from Tennessee, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, Georgia, and Alabama coming up to play. So we're just doing a red versus blue team, and it uh, it should still actually be pretty vicious. (laughs) I made sure to even them up pretty well. (laughs) Now, do me a favor. For those who blinked when you said who the halftime um, halftime activity is going to be, would you please repeat that? That was the Harlem Globetrotters are our halftime. Now, let's get this, folks. This Saturday night, Birmingham very special charity roller derby event with the Harlem Globetrotters for the halftime. You, first of all, can't beat that with a stick. Second of all, do me a favor. How much are the tickets? $10. What? Yeah, they're only $10, and all proceeds are going to the charity, so. Only only $10? Yes. Uh. Folks, for my friends, for everybody listening in our home market of Birmingham, Alabama, if you are free Saturday night, once again, this Saturday, you definitely better be at the Zamora Shrine Temple. Now, do me a favor. 
How can people get tickets for the event? Are they still available online? They are. Um, if you go to southeastsubs.brownpapertickets.com, they're on sale online for $10. Um, Zamora is a cash-only facility. You will be able to b- purchase tickets at the door, but just make sure you have cash on you. Um, we also have a Facebook event. Up. If you type that in Southeast Subs Charity Bout, it should pop up. Um, again, but southeastsubs.brownpapertickets.com has them on sale online, so you can beat that cash-only line. Get in through Will Call. Now, for those who might want to try to get a little bit more information other than what we've talked about here, how can they get in touch? BehamRollerDerby at gmail.com is a great way to get in contact with me personally. And again, that's BehamRollerDerby at gmail.com. And also, Southeast Subs does have a Facebook page. Again, that's kind of our biggest social media outlet that we use. And it uh, seems to be pretty positive. So, Now, this was something that was actually what my next question was going to be for people who would like to who think in the back of their mind that they would like to try or in the front of their mind even or in the center take your pick front center back take your it's all of the above who might like to try their hand at something like roller derby what would what what's the I first would, i would say um search their city and like whatever their local city is and add roller derby to that google or that search engine search it's going to pop up something within a 50 mile radius to them and then look into what their closest league specifically does as recruiting i know the local birmingham league does recruiting several times a year um, and basically what they do is they get people to come out to their practices and they provide them gear and they go over the basics they teach them you know this is kind of what your goal is this is how you fall with hopefully you know not breaking your nose or your rib um and it's kind of a slow go from there um, but I would absolutely, if someone's interested, Google your city and add roller derby to it, and it should pop up something. Very cool. Now, I'm going to ask the question I always do, and I give everybody that ultimate opportunity to be as shameless as humanly possible, or even inhumanly possible. Um, <laughs> sponsors the event, do you have um, people you'd like to mention in particular? Uh, Black Market Bar on Southside has been super awesome to us. Uh, George, the owner, he's always been super supportive of Derby from day one. He um, he is our official after-party sponsor. So we will be, all the Derby girls will be hanging out there afterwards, and that's Black Market Bar in Southside. Uh, Joe Attaway, he did our flyer, which if you've seen it, is just silly, amazing, awesome. Um, One Stop Promotions, they've printed shirts. Nicole Metcalf, TVM, with the Mercy Spay and Neuter Program, she's donated money. We've had so many awesome people just step up and contribute to what we're trying to accomplish and put on here. So, again, I could I could sit here and thank all the Derby girls, all the rest, Michael McCohen. He's been so awesome getting um, a lot of the officials that we need. It's Jamie Seitz. Uh, she's with UAB. She's helped a lot with the PR and pushing the promotions. So, then you know me. I've done a good bit. <laughs> You have done amazing on this so far. <laughs> so first off, let me, um, between me and you, personal and professional, let me tip my hat in your direction. I mean, this is sounding like it's going to be a great night. And for those who've never checked out Roller Derby before, this is a perfect chance. It really is. And like I said. I hope so. And I hope it's going to be, you know, I hope it's going to be huge. It's it's the weekend before Christmas. What could people possibly be doing? <laughs> uh, get away from the mall. Put the charge plate down. <laughs> back away slowly. <laughs> exactly Re- reset before the family comes into town this is your one chance and let me take something that tammy joe said a second ago and also extend it out to everybody listening right now because i will tell you this point blank as somebody who has been to events like this before i've seen live bouts and have enjoyed it every time that i've been out there it is not only a great release for the skaters themselves, but let me tell you something. It is going to be a great way for you to blow off steam as well because you get a chance to just cut loose and have some fun watching some hard-hitting action. And I do mean hard-hitting. Trust me, I've stood I have stood trackside and almost gotten taken out by a pileup before. It's like, there's worse <laughs> ways I could have been taken out. It's like, it's, I, I'd rather be taken out here than on the interstate. I'm good to go. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> but it is Yeah, what's better? You know, a six foot four derby girl in your lap or a transformer or a transfer truck stuff. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh don't want the transfer truck. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'll I I I'll volunteer for the i I'll volunteer for the derby girl. Excuse me while I stutter <laughs> for a hot second sounding like an imbecile. It's something that I do very well, I might add. But anything else you'd like to uh, by the way, one thing we didn't cover. 
the charity itself, and that's going to be for um, some more hospital transportation, right? <laughs> That is, um, these more Shriners, they basically have a funding pool where they help kids and their families who are coming um, from far in state and from even out of state to Children's Hospital and other hospitals that have that are children related to help pay for that basic transportation, to help pay for the parents to be able to stay close to the child while they're in the hospital. Um, they also help pay for a lot of the kids' medical equipment. Um, at specifically with a lot of rehabbing that has to be done afterwards. Um, and they try to focus on a lot of lower income families and stuff. So it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm super, super excited that this is the jury, um, that decided to work with us. Again, it's, it basically is helping sick kids. And seriously, what, how could that not be awesome? That is completely awesome. And, unless you have no heart at all. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Grinch would be smiling right now going, I'm. Exactly. <laughs> Folks, mark your calendars, make your plans. This Saturday night, December the 20th, doors are going to open at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Start time is 7 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Say it again. Doors open at 6, bout starts at 7. And you can still get tickets through southeastsubs.brownpaperticket. Dot com. It's just that easy. For all of our friends in our home market of Central Alabama, this is going to be a phenomenal time. I guarantee you, you will have a blast. Plain and simple. Any, um, is there, I keep thinking there's something that I'm missing. Is there something that I'm missing? I don't, I don't think so. We went over the charity. We went over the times. It's at the Moore Shrine Temple. We went over the fact that the frickin' Harlem Globetrotters are the halftime. <laughs> um, we mentioned that there are going to be some super awesome skaters there. And, you know, uh, Santa, Santa's going to be there. That's it. Um, <laughs> Santa's going to be there. Get a chance. So, to- I mean, yeah. Okay, I have to. We're going to have some professional photographers on site, so you know it's just it's going to be a really really awesome night altogether. Zamora has a full bar; they have a full food display, so it's it's a whole entire evening. And I will get a chance this coming Saturday to find out if Santa can be bribed. That way, I get off the naughty <laughs> list. I, that's that's my that's my number four priority this weekend to find out if Santa can be bribed. Tammy Joe, thank you for taking the time to come on this evening. It has been a blast. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, Eddie. Folks, hang with us. We're going to a quick break. We will return. We, me and my 47 other personalities, don't call me Sybil. Wrong. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Beyond Ringside, Back to Basics continues in just a moment. Hey, this is Stuart Couch from the Cause and Effect Thursday Night Throwdown. Catch us here every Thursday night, 7 p.m. Central on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Howdy friends, this is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern for Beyond Ringside ringside live on the beyond ringside radio network this is awesome austin creed the smartest man in this industry called pro wrestling the valid victorian of this business you are locked in to beyond ringside howdy friends this is the magic city motor mouth fast eddie lane and i'm the cause robert cosper and this is your invitation to join us and the hitman, Big Daddy Cool, Ryan Adcock, right here for the Saturday Showcase. At Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10, 9, 8 a.m. Pacific Time. See, we do math around this place. Be sure to catch us right here on BeyondRingside.com. You can also listen through Winamp for Android and BlackBerry, as well as the Shoutcast mobile app for Apple as well. Remember, that Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. And let me tell you how you can find the hitman, Big Daddy Cool, Ryan Adcock, on social media. It's very easy. It's at www.kissmyass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop that right there, folks. We'll see you Saturday on the showcase. Bye for now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bill Darrens, and you're watching, you're listening, you're experiencing Beyond Ringside. And you are a better person for it. Trust me. Just
just after the top of the hour. It's been a great night in the Beyond Ringside Studios here in beautiful Birmingham. Hell, I mean Birmingham, Alabama, all of the above. Back to basics, the home of the 10 count, live on this 16th day of December. Want to give first off a very special thank you to Tammy Joe from Southeast Subs for coming on board this evening. Had a tremendous time both on and off air and really looking forward to this coming Saturday night at the, at the Zamora Shrine Temple. I made the statement during the show open this evening that it is going to be a very busy weekend for a number of folks. And the gentleman coming on with us right now, good friend of the family, Gene Jackson. How's life been treating you, brother? Treating me well. It's treating me well, Eddie. How are you doing, buddy? It has been crazy. It's been the roller coaster ride. Fortunately, I'm tall enough to ride the ride. Unfortunately, I'm actually large enough to take up two seats. I feel you. I'm right there with you. <laughs> now, since, Absolutely. Since the last time I had a chance to talk to you, what all's been going on, brother? Uh, you know, just uh, just dominating wrestling as a manager, you know, with all my guys and uh just uh, ruling things everywhere we go. And and my, my good friend Memphis Monroe told me he had an opportunity to be on Beyond Ringside uh, recently and said he had a ball and, and, and highly recommended that I come on. Yeah, we've had a chance to talk on, behind the scenes. We've had a chance to talk first on phone, in email, you know, Facebook, all of the above. But we've never had a chance to have you personally here on the show. What's taken so damn long? I don't know, man, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, like you said, there is a lot going on. I've certainly got a busy weekend coming up, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it. Now, do me a favor. For, um, even as deep as your reputation runs around the southeastern U.S., for those who don't know, give us a little bit of a background on Gene Jackson. Well, uh, Gene Jackson, I, I, uh, I, manage, uh, I, I manage on a lot of shows. Uh, I used to wrestle on a lot of shows. I still do on occasion. Uh, but most of the time now, I manage I manage guys like Jed Johnson. Uh, I manage my nephew Britt Jackson, who's a current Pro South All Out champion. It's it's you're really really uh, making me proud over there at Pro South. I uh, manage guys like uh, independent wrestling superstar Kyle Matthews, uh, who I'm sure you know very well. Oh yeah, and. Uh, I used to uh, host a couple of podcasts myself. Right now, they're kind of on hiatus, but you never know when they could could come back. And I always enjoy doing that and uh, giving giving guys a chance to come on the air and uh, share uh, something about themselves and kind of let the fans see it, another side of a lot of these guys. And that's something Beyond Ringside does, and it's certainly something I appreciate, and I'm glad to have the opportunity to do it tonight. Now, before we go any further, let me go and lay this one out there. And I'm kind of blindsiding you on this one, and I don't mean to do it like this, but I'm going to do it anyway. You know, with your experience and with your knowledge and with your background in pro wrestling, we all have our own. For managers, what would be your Mount Rushmore? Who? Uh, managers, I'd have to go uh, Bobby Heenan, uh, Jim Cornette. Uh, you got to have J.J. Dillon. And uh, Jimmy Hart, more for his Memphis stuff. I mean, I did enjoy him in WWF, but man, uh, in Memphis, he was incredible. If there was a if there was a specific time period that you would like to teleport back to, what timeline, what area, and who would you like to manage? Who uh, I definitely like to go back to the eighties. I'd have to say mid eighties, around eighty five, eighty six. Uh, man, who to manage? That's, that is a tough one. Um, as I've, as I've always said, I'm a big fan of, of Memphis and continental and the Southern, Southern wrestling. So I guess it's just lucky that I happen to, happen to live here. Um, coincidentally, I mean, this may sound similar to somebody else you talked to in the past, but I, I guess I have to say, uh, I'd, I'd want to be in Memphis and I'd want to manage hot stuff, Eddie Gilbert. That would be fun because you know it would never be a dull moment with him around. Never. You just have to dodge the fireballs. Now, what do you look for in your charges before you agree? That, before you even agree in principle, what are the intangibles you look for when it comes to somebody you manage? Well, I mean, they got to be willing to listen and learn. You know, I. Uh, I don't want somebody that thinks they already know everything uh, because it's kind of hard to uh, 
to manage them and, and, and lead them in the direction you need them to go. So they got to be willing to listen first and foremost. They got to be open, uh, to, to suggestion and, and me, uh, imparting my wisdom for lack of a better word. But also, you know, uh, I mean, if you look at my, my stable that is, is, evolved over the years i mean there's not really i mean you've had guys like big toon but then you've had guys like jet johnson um that so there's not really i don't look for just big guys i don't look just for small i mean i have every um uh, type of, of wrestler you can name um i had in my stable at some point uh i don't even know if i can put my finger on it just to say this is what i what i look for but when i see a potential um uh, Gene Jackson client, I know it. Now, one of and of the, course, in the case of my my nephew Britt having my last name and being family <laughs> uh, certainly doesn't hurt. I was just about to ask, <laughs> and since you bring it up, because they say that family makes the most dangerous business partners, and this coming Friday night in Piedmont, Alabama, the sixth anniversary, six years. For Pro South Wrestling, 627 Southern Avenue. I don't even have to look for the address. I know this one by heart. <laughs> I really do. That's right. Your your blood relation and your client, Britt Jackson, the Pro South All Out Champion, will be defending that title in a ladder match against somebody that is very well known to the Beyond Ringside family of shows and to our longtime listeners. And that would be the last hero, Ace Haven, along with Amy Haven. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there like this. I have to ask the question, how deep does it run between you and Ace, first and foremost? Well, you know, me, me and Ace have been at odds since the first day I set foot at Pro South. Uh, me and, and Ace Haven's father, Terry Beatty, have been at odds since the first day I, I stepped in the, you know, the ring at pro South and, uh, that's never going to change. Uh, it's never going to, you're never going to see Gene Jackson and Ace Haven on the same side of the fence. You're never going to see us out there. Uh, you're never going to see Gene Jackson managing Ace Haven. It's just not going to happen. We're, we're different people. We, we stand for different things. And, uh, I made it no secret. It's been my mission to run him out of pro South since I've gotten there. And I'm halfway there because Terry Beatty is stepping down as commissioner of Pro South on Friday night. So I'm halfway there. So now all I got to do is push Ace Haven and Amy Haven on out the door. And what better way to do that? Because, see, Ace Haven picked the ladder match. I I'm not going to lie. Britt Jackson's, uh, you know, perfect match to pick for a title defense is not a ladder match, obviously. Um, do I have confidence that he can compete in a ladder match? Absolutely. Is he going to beat Ace Haven in a ladder match? Absolutely. But it's not ideal. I'll, I'll admit that. However, Ace Haven is, is, is the, you know, he's the Piedmont, he's from Piedmont. They, they love him there. He's their last hero. It's right there in his name. And how humiliated do you think he's going to be for him? He picked this match. He won a match that gave him the right to pick any stipulation he wanted and he picked a ladder match. So how humiliating would it be for him if Britt Jackson, his arch nemesis, Gene Jackson's nephew, comes to his hometown in his backyard in his father's ring and beats him for that all-out title? I think that I think we may see both of them leave Friday night. In all honesty, he may just jump in the back seat of, of Daddy's car and go with him. Now, this is something that I'm... I'm going where angels fear to tread right now because having worked with alongside of Ace on a couple of different outings in recent days, I know that Ace has his hands full in another area of the United States and he's in the middle of a major situation. Is there any possibility that you and Britt can utilize that situation right there to take, say, be, say maybe divert his concentration a little bit? I mean, I, I'm not playing any, I'm not playing devil's advocate here, but I'm playing, you know, I'm playing devil's advocate here because I know, hey, I know you, Gene, Gene, and Britt Jackson will take advantage of any situation that we can't see. Britt, bless his heart, you know, he he's been. 
he's been a little misguided lately. He, he suddenly, you know, he's a champion, and he's he's decided that he wants to hear the cheers of the fans. He wants to try to shake their hand. He wants to try to win them over. He wants to come up with little hand gestures and and dance like James Hardy and do things <laughs> that I don't approve of. And and I've got to get that out of him. I got to if I have to beat it out of him, I'm going to get that that out of him and get him focused on what matters. But the fact is, all the people who thought that Britt Jackson was just you know my sister's kid that I was dragging into pro south and forcing down everybody's throat, who thought that Britt Jackson couldn't cut it in the ring, have seen. I mean, he's he he won the all out title just at, at Battle Rumble alone. He fought to the bitter end of an eight-man tag elimination match. He was the last man eliminated. Then he was number two in the Battle Rumble, made it all the way to the very end, came very close to winning it, and I think he should have won it. Uh, I think he got robbed by Donnie Primetime, but that's not a conversation I'll have right now. But people have to be impressed with Britt Jackson. He's for real. He's more than just Gene Jackson's nephew. He is a force to be reckoned with at Pro South. And taking down Ace Haven in a ladder match is just the next step towards Brett Jackson being the Pro South champion in 2015. Now, this is something I play devil's advocate for a reason, because there is another side of the coin. Knowing Ace Haven, knowing his focus, knowing his intensity, knowing his determination, knowing the fact that Ace will fight to his very last breath, not only as the last hero, but also for the sake of him being professional. He will step up to the challenge, regardless of what's going on, maybe here, uh, maybe over in Georgia, maybe down in Florida, maybe up in Tennessee, over in Mississippi. No matter what he's got on his plate out somewhere else, I'll sit back and I will say, Ace Haven will be the first one to fight all the way to the end, as you like to use that phrase a minute ago. The question is right oh, now. Uh, the question is right uh, now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead and finish your thought. I'm sorry. Does Britt Jackson have it inside him to go as far to keep the title as Ace will go to win the title? Well, you know, I mean, I might I might have to rattle his cage a little bit. I might even have to slap him around a little bit. Britt Jackson has it in him. Deep down within Britt Jackson, he has that killer instinct. He has the same thing that his Uncle Gene has. But sometimes you just have to drag it to the surface. It's not always there right where it needs to be. But when I get him, pull him aside, uh, I've even had to maybe slap him in the face a few times to, to jar him. But when he when he gets that that gut, you know, I can't even describe it. When, when he feels it, Brett Jackson will go to the ends of the earth to beat Ace Haven. And I'm not knocking Ace Haven. Ace Haven... Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say he's not a worthy opponent, and I'm not going to uh, disagree with what you just said. Yes, Ace Haven will do whatever it takes to win within the realm of being the last hero. Britt Jackson and Gene Jackson will do whatever it takes to win, period. Now, also, one other thing that Ace has going for him right now, Amy in his corner, not only business but also family and inspiration as well how do you combat the force that is amy haven well, let me ask you this you say he has that working for him but let's say ace haven's climbing the ladder let's say brit sprawled out on the mat ace haven's climbing the ladder and he's just about to reach that all-out title but gene jackson grabs amy by the head of the hair and he's fixing to pitch her out into about the third row now Ace Haven has a choice to make. Does he go on up that ladder and does he choose the all-out title over Amy? Or does he come back down to defend his woman? And while he's coming after me, Britt Jackson has a clear shot to go up and take the belt. So is it really working in his favor? I don't know. But by the same token, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. Do you dare grab Amy by the hair of the head is my question. <laughs> Hey, if, if it means a, if it means a few scratches and uh, maybe a slap across the jaw, if it gets the job done and it gets Britt out of there with that all-out title, Uncle Gene will do what he's got to do. Now, and everybody knows that. Now, let me go ahead and bring this up real quick because you are going to be even busier because another one of your charges, Jed Johnson, is going to be in action this coming Friday night. 
He absolutely will. Let me tell you something. Jed Johnson, uh, when I, when I, when I brought him into the family, Jed Johnson was on a losing streak. He hadn't won a match in a couple of months. People were down on him. The, the fans were starting to turn on him. And uh, everybody pretty much had just written Jed Johnson off. But I seen something in Jed, and I and I say it every every show when I announce him. I say pound for pound, the toughest guy in pro South wrestling, Jed Johnson. And he is. He may be one of the smallest guys there, but he's got a lot of heart. He's a tough guy. He studies he studies tapes. He studies matches from all over the world all the time. He's constantly adding new moves to his repertoire. And uh, a guy like Big Toom looks at Jet Johnson, and he laughs it off. He thinks, oh, I'm Big Toom. I'm going to go in. I'm going to destroy Jed Johnson. I don't think so. I think Jed is going to take this opportunity because Toom, he's a former Pro South champ. Right. He's got his mind on Shane Daniels. He's got his mind on the fact that Gene Jackson pitched him out of the Battle Rumble like a bag of garbage. I threw him out of that ring all by myself. And he's focused on that, and I think Jed Johnson's going to sneak in, and he's going to beat him, and Jed Johnson's going to become the giant killer of Pro South Wrestling. Gene, first off, I want to thank you for taking the time to come on board with us this evening. It has been, I say us, me and my 47 other personalities. Sybil, no, not quite, but pretty <laughs> damn close. Now, like I said, now, real quick, I know you're going to have your hands full, but I'm going to go ahead and put this one out there. In addition to the matches, of course, that you're going to have a direct impact on, what one match are you also going to be keeping an eye on this coming Friday night? Well, there's two. There's two. Uh, Another one that I'm going to be keeping an eye on is the return of the independent wrestling superstar, my favorite wrestler, Kyle Matthews, who I do manage, but Kyle asked me a favor. Kyle asked me, since he's making his grand return to Pro South, he hasn't been there in months, since he's returning, and I've got so much other going on, I've got an injured leg because my leg was nearly broken when I was thrown out of the Battle Rumble, but that's a whole other story. He said that he would uh, he would let me deal with Jed and Britt, and he would go out on his own to take on the Southern Stud, Waylon Rhodes. And, hey, not taking anything away from Waylon Rhodes, because anybody that knows Pro South six-year history, it's the six-year anniversary, right. knows that Waylon Rhodes is a huge part of that. And Waylon Rhodes is a hugely popular wrestler, and he's a tough guy to boot. But, Eddie, we're talking about Kyle Matthews, independent wrestling superstar. Kyle Matthews, in my mind, is the greatest professional wrestler right now that's not on TV on Monday nights. You hear everybody losing their mind about NXT's show the other night and Kevin Steen was there and all that. Mark my words, one of these days, Kyle Matthews will be down there in Florida on NXT, and he will be the one everybody's talking about. But in the meantime, take your opportunity to drive to Piedmont, Alabama, and see him in action Friday night as he puts on a clinic against the Southern Stud, Waylon Rhodes. Folks, do me a favor. Hang with us. First off, Gene, do me a favor. We're about to have to go to a quick break. Um, All right. How can everybody track you down on social media? Uh, social media, you can find me on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash king of all wrestling media, because that's what I am. And uh, you can also find me on Twitter. That's uh, twitter.com slash Vince hates us all. And that's a <laughs> column that I occasionally write for wrestlingnewscenter.com. And if you want to email me, it's uh, genejackson95 at gmail.com. Gene, definite pleasure to have you on board. I'd love to have you come back on sometime. Anytime, man. You name it, I'll be there. Folks, hang with us. Going to go to a very quick break. When we come back, the Pro South theme continues because we are slated to be joined by the winner of the 2014 Battle Rumble and the man who will be challenging for the Pro South Championship, Donnie Primetime, right here on Beyond Ringside. Back to basics. The home of the 10 count right after this. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need 
and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS. That's 533-HITS. Or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. Hey, this is Stan Grubb for WrestleRage Radio right here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us every Sunday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for myself and Smart Rage as we discuss the professional wrestling business from WWE, TNA, and all things in between. We'll have an interview here or there. We'll see what we can do to just keep you entertained. And along the way, we're going to have to bring up some emotion and make you think. That's what we like to do. So join us here on Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you at WrestleRage. I hear to with refuse to call this Monday version 2.0 anymore. <laughs> Welcome back into Beyond Ringside, back to basics. 25 after the hour of Fast Study Lane, live from Studio One, also called the Beyond Ringside Studios on this Tuesday. Thank. want to say thank you to everybody who has been catching us on the replays, whether it be through iTunes, Podomatic, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C, through Stitcher, through Spreaker, as well as iHeartRadio. Yes, you can find Beyond Ringside branded products, Saturday Showcase, Beyond Ringside Live, and Back to Basics, Home of the Ten Count, and the Tuesday Conversation through iHeartRadio. Special thank you to Gene Jackson for coming on board with us just a couple of minutes ago. I said it, I promised it, and we delivered it. As the anniversary party for Pro South Wrestling, which comes to a head and culminates this Friday night in Piedmont, Alabama, continues. He is the winner of the 2014 Battle Rumble and challenging for the Pro South Championship this weekend. Donnie Primetime, welcome to Beyond Ringside. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. What's going on? It has been a beautiful day, and the night just keeps getting better by the minute. Now, do me a favor. Oh, I know it. Let's dive straight on into what makes Donnie Primetime Donnie Primetime. Everybody has, everybody has a unique answer for this question, and a lot of it is based on age and geographic location. But for all of us, there are two moments. One, the moment we become a fan of this wonderful thing called pro wrestling. The second moment is when that little light bulb goes off over the head, and that little voice in your brain goes, I gotta do this. For Donnie Primetime, what are those two moments? Um, man, I remember being about three years old and my mother working at a Texaco and uh, she would bring home these wrestling VHSs and she would put them in and it was uh, Ultimate Warrior versus Hulk Hogan and I would stop playing with my Power Rangers and I just took notice immediately. I was like, whoa, what is this? It was crazy. It was great. It was, it was superheroes, live action superheroes before the Avengers, before Spider-Man, before X-Men. It was just the realest greatest thing ever and i was hooked on it instantly ever since now is that um is that your, for both moments when you became a fan and when you decided you wanted to do this I, i've always wanted to do this to some point and uh it, it gets to the point where me like probably thousands of others it, it evolved from you know body slamming my wrestling buddy on the couch to going <laughs> on the trampoline with a few of my brothers and cutting backflips and breaking our necks and you know just trying to do it like that understand but, the concept now if i could let me go let me go ahead and ask you when it came to getting into the ring the first time for training did you have the butterflies did you have hummingbirds did you have a pterodactyl running loose in your stomach how nervous were you Oh, man, it was rough. I, mean, I come from an MMA background, and uh, I have 11 amateur MMA fights. I thought I took it all like that. You know, it's just training, it's training, and it's here to get myself better. But you get in that ring, man, it's just it's kind of aura about it. It's something to it. It's nothing like anything else in the world. When you step in that ring, it, you can't get that anywhere else. And you got uh, football, MMA, hockey, lacrosse, swimming, polo, whatever. You can't get it. You know, unless you step in that ring, you don't, you know, you, there's no other way to describe it. Man. I, I'm lost for words right now. Now, as far as people that you've squared off against on the other side of the ring, who have been some of your more notable um, opponents? 
my more notable opponents. Yeah, uh, the ones that well, really stick out in your mind. Uh, former Pro South heavyweight champion, Big Toom, uh, he, he's one of them. Uh, Britt Jackson, yeah, some of the Pro South guys there. James Hardy, uh, the beautiful ball besties, those guys were, those guys were great. And uh, the Young Lions, I really enjoyed working them well. <laughs> but uh, anytime, I, anytime I get to wrestle or spar with Ace, it's, it's always great. It's always, it's always real fun getting in there with the guy that trains you and uh, just letting everything out and seeing what happens. Now, a lot of people want to put labels and tags and everything else as far as in-ring style. How would you define yourself as far as your in-ring style goes? Controlled chaos, man. I'm I'm everywhere. I'm showing, you know, I, I hardly don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next, man. It's like it just comes to me. Oh, well, here's this. Let's do it. You know, it's uh, I don't. I don't have a filter for my wrestling. It's and when something pops into my head, it's I just I go for it, you know. And uh, the fans seem to just they relate to that. And I'm a I'm very I'm very intense and just uh, just very out there. And people love it. So you know, hey, must be doing something right. <laughs> now, when it came down to it, you had an opportunity along with a number of other competitors in the 2014 Battle Rumble. And the winner of that, of course, getting a chance to go on to face the champion. When you have, when you have, a lot of people look at it as, man, the deck is stacked against me. How am I going to do this? You have others who are like, yeah, you're just in my way. You better move now before I move you. What was your mindset going into the Battle Rumble? Um, it's like it is every time I step in the ring. I'm in there to win. I'm not, I'm not in there to be second best. I'm not in there to be a tag along to anyone. I'm in there to compete, and I'm in there to win. Um, prom time don't come to play. I mean, I knew, looking down on me, everyone thought I was the underdog, and, you know, never really stepped out in a singles format competition. So, um, everyone was doubting me, and uh, I'm just glad I could prove everyone wrong. They know prom time for real now. Now, without revealing too much, this Friday, December the 19th, 627 Southern Avenue, Pro South Wrestling celebrates their sixth anniversary. And it will be you and the current champion, Damian Serotone, one-on-one for the Pro South Championship. How do you approach a match with Damian? Damian's a veteran. He's been there. He's done everything. There's nothing in Pro South that Damian Serotone has not done. So uh, an approach to this match, I've just been working hard. Pace and uh, training has been busting me. Uh, it's crazy, man. Just uh, watching a lot of film, working on uh, you know key reversals and timing. Timing is everything in a match with a guy like Damian. You throw his timing off, and that I think that that's probably how I'm going to end up having a chance. Now, let me ask the question, point blank: What does the concept of winning the Pro South Championship mean to you? Yeah, man. <laughs> it, it means the world, man. I mean, uh, to come in as a fan and sit there for over a year while uh, paying my dues and breaking my back in training and then going and uh, busting out as a tag team, uh, tag team guy and winning the titles twice and just constantly being in the tag team title picture, man, and then eventually breaking into my own star and doing it against a guy like Damian Steratone, who is probably one of the best wrestlers to ever step foot in the pro south ring and really heavily underrated when you look at the guy but hey, there's nothing damn you can't do i mean the guy's an animal and it was just to go in there with get the competitor like him and to be able to put on a good show and win i can't put a price on that that that's just that's, that's totally great now let me ask let me lay this one out there for you like this having been successful in the tag ranks hmm? where you have that tag team partner to look to in a match of this magnitude where that championship is on the line and this is the shot. How do you refocus your mindset, taking it from being a veteran of tag, a multi-time tag champion to gunning for that title? Mindset's different. You know, when I got Chris McCain out there watching my back, it's different. You know, I can afford to mess up. I can make little mistakes. But uh, when it's just prime time out there, especially against a great competitor like Damian Serafone, I can't make mistakes. You know, 
he capitalizes on one thing, and next thing you know, I'm sitting back down in the ranks trying to fight my way up to get back to it. It's uh, it's just it's me, it's all me. No one else is in there. When that bell rings and he looks me in the eye, it's just him and I. There's no Chris McCain. There is no Ace Haven. There's stuff. Now, you can't be on the outside of your body looking in for your match, but I will ask you this question. What match in particular are you looking forward to being able to watch with your own two eyes this coming Friday night? <laughs> man, I, ooh, you really put me on the spot on that one. Oh, man, I mean, the ladder match is going to be incredible. Hey, save it, man. That's, that guy, he's a straight up awesome. And Britt Jackson, for some reason, just keeps finding ways to win. I mean... It's really going to be interesting to see who can come out on top of that. Um, then you got the Waylon Rose and Kyle Matthews. Ah, man, just two of the greatest superstars to ever compete in Pro South, man. Ah, both of them are on, you know, up there. You just you got to put up on a pedestal when it comes to Pro South wrestling. And then you got uh, Shane Daniels is, is wrestling someone he's, he's never competed against before, and you know, being there, that's that's always crazy. It's just gonna be a fun night, man. Everything. I, I don't think there's a match on there you can miss from start to finish. It's gonna be a barn burner, man. Now, also one of the things we haven't talked about, and we haven't, um, we're gonna actually bring it up a little bit more in depth a little bit later. But also, you've got an exhibition match coming up this coming Friday, where Sean Nelson, one half of the tag team champions, will be facing off against yeah, Dusty oh, McQueen. Oh, oh. Ah, nah, not a fan of Mister Nelson. <laughs> Not at all. Well, Sean's going to be taking on Dusty McWilliams. Go Cowboy. Go Cowboy. Now, do me a favor. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot. Go ahead. Commissioner Terry Beatty steps down this weekend, and a new commissioner is going to be named. I'm going to kind of put you on the spot. If there was a message that you'd like to give to Terry Beatty right now as far as his send-off goes, what would that be? Man, Terry Beatty is great. Hey, man, he's just, just stay positive, man. He's, he's been such a huge part of this, and I, I hope he stays around in just some small aspect, man. It, the locker room's not going to be the same locker room without having him around. He's like a wrestling father, not just to me, but to just everyone that comes in that building, man. Terry's a great guy and a class act. Now, I put you on the spot two more times. This one. Go ahead. A direct message from you, from Donnie Primetime, to Damian Serotone. Don't sleep on me. All I got to say, you're waking up checking your watch. You know, you know what time it is. You know what time it is when he checks his watch. What time is it? Sounds like it's prime time to me. It's prime time. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> and if there was a... Uh, go ahead. I tell him, underestimate me, go ahead. Because when he does, he's going to make the biggest mistake in his career. He's going to be going home about 10 to 15 pounds lighter than he came in. And let me also put you on the spot for um, a personal message from you to all the wrestling fans of Pro South. All the wrestling fans of Pro South. December 19th today, you're going to want to mark down all in your calendars. You want to be there two hours early to make sure you get ringside seats because, baby, when prime time comes, he comes to play, and there is a stacked card from top to bottom. There's not a show out there this year that I can think having a lot of like this. You guys just need to be there. It's going to be crazy. Folks, mark your calendars, make your plans. This Friday night, December the 19th, in Piedmont, Alabama, Pro South Wrestling proudly celebrates its sixth anniversary. Great milestone, great achievement. Love to find out. Happy to be, you know, happy for Beyond Ringside to be as much of a part. I wish I could be there in person. Ace, Ace and everybody knows I work two jobs on a Friday. It's hard for me to get one shift off, much less to try to get both jobs off. But I will not be oh, there. I won't be there in body. What you do, man. I'll be there in spirit. You can be guaranteed yeah. on that one. And I'm, we're looking for some great things to happen this coming Friday night. Donnie, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks for your favor. Folks, do me a favor. Hang with us. Going to go to a very short break. And we've got a very special friend coming on in just a minute. This is Beyond Ringside. Back to Basics.
Hey everyone, this is The Cause, Robert Cosper, host of Cause and Effects Thursday Night Radio Throwdown. This is your invitation to join me, along with the effects Stuart Couch, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, and all of the craziness that is C&E, right here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. It's wrestling radio with a twist, and some might just say with a twist of lime when the bar is open. Cause and Effect, right here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at YouTube.com slash PottyHumor or subscribe at PottyHumor on iTunes and Stitcher today. Eighteen before the top of the hour on this special edition, Beyond Ringside Back to Basics. And I'll let you know now, the name change will go into effect maybe next week. We're going to be moving from Back to Basics to the 10 count. Maybe. I'm going to toss a coin a little bit later on in the evening. I've just kind of got used to calling it Back to Basics. But I've had the 10count.com and .net saved for the longest time, and I just feel like I should go ahead and do something with it. So, mm mm-hmm. We'll work on that concept. Trust me on that one. Live for the Beyond Ringside Studios in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. Glad to have you a part of this live broadcast. 17 before the top of the hour on the 16th day of December. Cannot believe this month is halfway done. We're nine days ahead of that day. Which means I'm 10 days in front of my favorite day. And that would be December 26th. Why? Because Christmas is done. And I'm that much. (laughs) Really. But I'm not going to count my chickens. And I'm not going to go nine or ten days into the future. Why? Because we're going to go three days into the future. December the 19th. The party continues. I promised a very special friend coming on board this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, the last hero, Ace Haven. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. How about you? Dude, it's been a great night. Great to be able to hear from Gene Jackson. Actually, finally get him on the show. Talk to him on phone. Talk to him on Facebook and all the other different forms and methodologies. And finally got him on the show. Great to have Donnie Primetime coming on board. I could swear I, I feel the disturbance in the force. And I know Amy's around there somewhere. So do me a favor. Tell Amy I said hi. Hello. <laughs> and dude, you've got your work cut out for you. I hate to say it. You and, you and I go way back on this. But this coming Friday night, I have to say, after the conversation that I've had with Gene, and I don't know if you heard it or not, Britt Jackson is willing to do anything and everything and all that it takes to hold on to the all-out championship. And I know how much that belt means to you personally. It does. It means a lot. And I know I have a really good track record against Britt Jackson in one-on-one encounters. But that's why I had to even the playing field, and I've got him playing ball in my court this time. Ladder match. That seems to be a very popular concept right now, and I know that you've got experience in those. Now, going into this match, what is the one thing that is really staying in the front of your mind? Different ways to maim him while attempting to climb the ladder. It's- not hard to figure out how to climb a ladder. It's just a lot harder to figure out how to keep someone down long enough to do that. Now, I did ask, I, I don't know if you heard or not, but I'm going to lay it out there. I did ask Gene, there is an equalizer to a great degree that you have in your corner, and that would be the lovely Amy Haven. And I don't think Gene realizes in both hemispheres of his head exactly what Amy is willing to do to make sure that Gene doesn't stick his nose into the match this coming Friday. Would you do me a favor and elaborate for everybody on that one? Uh, You know, Amy got, she got pretty violent before. So, I mean, I don't think she would 
he wouldn't have any issues getting violent with Gene Jackson of all people. I mean, Gene several times attempted to strike her while she was pregnant and throw her down and various other miscellaneous forms of villainy. So I'm sure she wouldn't mind laying her hands on him if she had to. Now, let's shift it for just a second. Six years, man. Pro South running strong six years. What does that mean to you? Yeah, that means a lot. I'm probably the, I'm probably the most tenured of everyone there. Of the 230 shows, I was on 228 of them. And I don't think anyone else can say that. I've been there from the start. I've been there from day one. I'm here now. I've been there through all the ups, all the downs. I've been there for every bit of it. And it means a lot to see it make it to this point. Let me ask you just to pull three moments off the top of your head that have transpired with you at Pro South. For like a top three for myself. Kind of, sort of. Mm. Wow. Um, I would have to say the career versus career match I had with Brandon Collin at Wicked Havoc because of the aura that, it, that everything just had up to it. It just had such a larger than life feel and everything just came together and the match was just really well received and it was just such a great moment. And I had one of those really, this is what wrestling was supposed to feel like moments. It really felt like that. Uh, and then another great moment for me was I had to have a mystery partner a few months ago earlier this year, back in April. And the lights went out. The lights came back on, and my mystery partner was in the ring. It was one of my former nemesis, Jimmy Rave, who came up with me against two of Gene's guys. That, that was a really great memory for me. Um, and then probably one of the moments that stands out the most to me was the crosswire match I had with Scott Spade back in 2010 because it was only the second time we had done one of those matches, and we were both so green into what we were doing, and having to go out there and, and take so many risks with each other. It was just really crazy. It was just a match that really stands out to me. I would have to, and, and to give it honorable mention, since it's not technically, I guess, a pro stuff memory, even though it was in the building, but I would have to say the uh, the match I had with Kyle Matthews at Jakara stands out to me a lot, too. It's one of my top, just my career highlights, even beyond the pro stuff highlights. Yeah, because 627 Southern Avenue has seen a lot of action over the last six years, and it's not just Pro South because a lot of people do remember the fact that that building hosted Chikara Pro Wrestling, um, what was it, two years ago? Two years ago. I really wanted to come out there for that. We got to work on this Friday thing, dude. <laughs> yes, I'm being, selfish when, I'm being selfish when I say that. We got to work on this Friday thing, dude. Now... This coming this coming Friday. See, I'm so used to saying Saturday sometimes, and I'm glad for everybody who's able to make it out there on Friday nights. First off, as someone who is involved in pro wrestling to the depth that I am, I'm glad y'all can make it out there. I wish I could be there right alongside of y'all. But for a company to stand the test of time, six years running, we've gone from the wild, wild west as far as pro wrestling in Alabama to the advent of the Alabama Athletic Commission and all the fun and frivolity and chaos that ensued. <laughs> I know a number of people are smiling as I say that. And then, as things have come full circle, six years later, and everything has run a great course, and, it always, and I know it's cliche, but I can always say, and it still keeps getting better. What do you attribute that to? I think it's just the heart and the drive of the people that are in our business. They're the kind of the lifeblood of it. Even even if the fans aren't coming out, even if the promoters aren't putting in the work into their product, the guys still are. The guys are still there, and they're they're killing it. They're busting their butts. They're doing everything they can. Whether there's ten people out there, whether there's a hundred people out there, and I think that's what's translating. Everything getting better and everything just seeming like it's just it's just gonna grow. Let's take a look at the lineup. 
this Friday night, December the 19th. Remember, doors are going to open at 6 o'clock p.m. Bell time is set for 7. Ace, how much are tickets? All tickets, $8. Kids, 400 free. In the main event of the evening, the Pro South Championship will be on the line. Champion, Damian Serotone, defending against the winner of the 2014 Battle Rumble, Donnie Primetime. Your thoughts on that match? I'm excited to watch it. Donnie Primetime is one of my protégés. And I'm really proud to see him main eventing, especially in this high caliber of a, of a match. Um, I hope he can do it. I've got all the faith in the world in him. Former Pro South champions collide. The Southern stud, Waylon Rhodes, taking on a name that has been synonymous with Southern wrestling and wrestling in the Southeast for quite a while in a number of different states. Kyle Matthews. I'm, I'm I'm super excited for that one. I'm just my I had to put my jaw off the floor for that. Kyle Matthews is in in my in my humble opinion probably the greatest technical wrestler that this area this region has ever seen. And for him to be coming back from injury to take on the Southern Stars Wayland Road, I'm just, I'm definitely gonna have my eyes glued to the monitors for that one. Now, as part of the sixth anniversary show, a grudge match. You heard Gene Jackson talking about a little while ago, folks. It will be Jed Johnson taking on Big Tomb. Ace? Jed's dead. Jed's dead. You're going to have to get a spatula to pull this guy up off the mat. It's going to be horrible. <laughs> now, do me a favor. Tell everybody about the open challenge that Shane Daniels has. Shane Daniels has just been killing guys. He's been killing guys. He's, he's huge. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this guy's size. I mean, he's He's six eight, six nine, pushing at least three fifty, and he just can move around the ring. He could do a cartwheel. I mean, he can just move around the ring like a cruiserweight, and he's killing guys, man. He's just so he's so unstoppable. And so after his recent winning streak, he's made a challenge for anyone he's never faced in a pro staff ring before to to, to challenge him. And I'm just I'm glad that disqualified me because I'm not signing up for that. <laughs> And also advertised as an exhibition match. One half of the tag team champions, Sean Nelson taking on Dusty McWilliams. That'll be really interesting to see what Sean can do without having Elrod in his corner like he usually does. This isn't a tag, so I think Dusty will have his number in this one. Do you have any other surprises as far as matches go? Or is the card pretty much set and ready to ride? Uh, James Hardy and Victoria Ventures will be on the card in some form. And with their recent little romance in the Battle Rumble, that'll surely be entertaining. And also, this coming Friday night, the long-standing figure, Terry Beatty, the commissioner, steps down, and you've got a new commissioner who is going to be named. First off, let me go ahead and lay it out there, and I'm going to ask you to look from the outside in. from a, As a ring warrior first, what is Terry Beatty really meant to Pro South? How would you best describe it? He's, he's like Zordon for the Power Rangers. Good one. To, to, you know, to me, that that's how it feels. Like without him, none of this would have even been possible. He wouldn't have been for six years, so it wouldn't have been for him. He's the one that did all this. He's the one that did a lot of the engineering. He's not just you know, he's not just a financial aspect. He did a lot of the engineering. A lot of the carpentry that was required is what we needed to do. He did, he did a whole lot of it. He was kind of, kind of the blood of press now. Terry has been, and this is, like I said, even though I haven't been there, I've spoken with you on a number of occasions and a number of the people who've come through the doors at Pro South, whether they be wrestlers, workers, fans, all of the above. And a lot of people use three words when it comes to Terry the driving force because he's put heart, he's put soul and he's put determination into not only building, but continue to grow the pro South product. So Terry, first off, I'm going to say, dude, congratulations on a great six year run. I'm not going to use the term. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. I'm just saying, I wish you the absolute best in your next chapter of life after stepping down as commissioner. And whoever's going to be stepping in has got some really big shoes to fill. Agree, Ace? 
Oh, definitely. And I'm super excited to see who the new commissioner is. Now, I'm going to kind of put you on a little bit of a spot for a hot second. Direct message to your opponent, Britt Jackson, this Friday night. What would it be? Uh, my sincerest apologies. I don't really have all that against Britt. It's not much of a personal thing. Mostly, you know, me and his uncle have issues. But I don't. I don't have much against Britt. He's a really good competitor. He, you know, he he's got a lot of heart. He's got a lot of dedication. He's very strong. And I don't. I don't have a whole lot against him. And I really hate that it's come to this. That this is what we've got to go to because this is one of these matches where you can win. But both guys really feel like the loser afterwards. So I really hate that I'm going to have to do what I'm going to have to do to him to beat him. Because I don't really have that much against the guy. It's not personal. It's just he's got something I want. Folks, for our friends in eastern Alabama, western Georgia, southern Tennessee, mark your calendars, make your plans. It is right around the corner. You heard earlier it is only three days away. Give everybody how much the tickets are one more time. All tickets, $8. It's four and under free. Folks, doors are going to open at 6 o'clock p.m. Bell time is set for 7. It is an all-star night of professional wrestling action under the banner of Pro South Wrestling, the sixth anniversary show. Definitely worth the drive. Check it out. Ace, always a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you for joining me this evening. Thank you for the invite. Folks, hang with us. Oh, wait a minute. I have to do this. And Ace's hair just went a touch more blonde. You also have right around the corner. And I want to get your thoughts on this. I believe the date is going to be Saturday, December 27 in Carrollton, Georgia. Ring a bell to you? Absolutely does. It's in the six-man tag. Do me a favor, for those who have not heard yet, now, I know that they've made a little bit of an announcement about it through um, Peach State Wrestling Alliance, but Peach State Wrestling Alliance Christmas Chaos is going to be Saturday, December 27th, Carrollton, Georgia, at the historic VFW Fairgrounds. Let me get, um, let me ask you to give everybody the rundown of the match, the six-man tag that's going to take place. The six-man tag, Jimmy Rave approved. Jimmy Rave, Tank, and the Lethal Dose Strict Nine. Versus myself, the Georgia Junior Heavyweight Champion, Rod Eddie, and Action Mike Jackson. That's all my fault. I have to ask the question. Devil's Advocate's back in the play. Are you really going to be able to focus all of your attention on Britt Jackson, knowing everything that's been going on with the Georgia Junior Heavyweight Championship and with Jimmy Raven strict nine. Yeah, I think I can do that. I'm going to have to car- I'm going to have to compartmentalize a little bit on that, but that's what champions do. That's what people who wrestle at the caliber of matches that I have to on a regular basis have to do. You have to be able to go, I'm going to worry about that later. And I'm going to worry about this tonight. It's going to be a big night this Friday night, brother. I wish you the best. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the last hero, Ace Haven, right here on Beyond Ringside, Back to Basics. Hang with us. Going to go to a quick top of the hour break. Back for the home run round in just a minute. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling, uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. Howdy friends, this is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com for all of upcoming show information. And, of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern for Beyond Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network.
Two minutes after the top of the hour, welcome back in. Back to basics, home of the 10 count, and the Tuesday conversation. More nicknames than I've got active brain cells. Of course, if anything, over the number one would pass that number of active brain cells. First off, before I go any further, I want to say a very special thank you to Tammy Joe for coming on this evening with Southeast Subs. Looking forward immensely to this coming Saturday night at the Zamora Shrine Temple. Great charity event. Roller Derby action. And at the half, the Harlem Globetrotters. Looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. Roller Derby and the, and the Trotters. This is going to be a great Saturday night. Thank you again to Gene Jackson, Donnie Primetime, and Ace Haven for coming on board. Pro South Wrestling celebrating its sixth anniversary this coming Friday night, 627 Southern Avenue. For our friends in eastern Alabama, definitely make your plans. And now I make a reference every once in a while to a surprise. I'd like to welcome in my tag team partner on Sundays on Beyond Ringside Live, and he is also the host of the To Be Determined show, Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Central. The Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. What's up, Wick? How is everyone doing tonight? Sorry, I uh, missed the show. I had no idea. And then Sunday, I wasn't even going to be on ringside. I actually <laughs> fell asleep. I had three kids by myself this weekend, and I was exhausted. It can get crazy. Oh, yeah. Crazy is, is the operative word because Miss Angie wasn't here, so uh, Marilyn and Lily decided that they wanted to, when she coming home, when she do this, when she do that. And I have been I played dolls. I played house. I played customer for about four hours to my two-year-old asking me what I wanted to eat. And then they would run in and cook, cook it on their little uh, kitchen uh, place that we have for them. Nice. Oh, it was it was crazy, to say the least. Now, I need, I'm going to lay this one out there. First off, last Wednesday, we had a blast on an extended edition. As I say extended as far as personnel goes, not as far as the timelines go. Because, actually, you had myself... And the cause Robert Cosper in the C and E studios. You had Wick in uh, Bohemian Grove, and then with everything else going on, Clyde Braddock coming on board, Angie coming on board, and of course you had the impromptu visit from the wrestling prophet Tub E Thunder. <laughs> that was a blast, dude! Oh, my goodness gracious, alive! That is, I, I couldn't tip my face hurt for hours after that. I've got to ask you a question. How? How much are you looking forward to Saturday, December 27th and season's beatings for Global Championship Wrestling? Well, uh, as I posted on the Global Championship uh, fan page and the event page, uh, it's, it's going to be an amazing show. Uh, I know a lot of people are looking forward to cruise against uh, Spiral or Spiral, ever how you want to say it. Spiral. Uh, and, and the latter match, but but there will be another match, Eddie. Yes, there is, and that's one of the reasons why I'm glad that you were able to come on board this evening. I'm, I'm glad you invited me on because I have a lot to say about that. You know, you, you guys have talked uh, Thursday night as well about the tension. I know Cosper really put it up between. There's no tension between Josh and Mad Dog, and and when we beat them, I don't want to be. Oh well, they no, we're going to beat them straight up. We may not even cheat to beat them. No, I can say that. <laughs> and. I, See, here's the funny part, because you made the reference over on Facebook about five, six hours ago, and I was actually going to post that first thing tomorrow morning, that it has been confirmed that the GCW Tag Team Championships will be on the line Saturday night, December the 27th. The Five Star Fight Club defend against the Sevenfold Saints, managed by the Wicked Nemesis. It's going to be a knockdown drag out. You know, I have been on opposing corners with a Josh and Dan several times. I've actually managed them at MCW when they were the Five Star Fright Club. So I know these guys all too well. I consider Dan and Josh both friends, but uh, they know. Anytime you have a title at GCW, you have a target right on your chest. It's like the superheroes that wear the chest, the, the chest emblems. Yeah. Because that's exactly where we're aiming for, straight to their heart. And I've told Mad Dog. I gave Mad Dog the opportunity. Mad Dog, you can back out. He has he has a new baby. I know he wants to grow old. You know he can stop using his just for men. And uh, I, I give him, you, know, you get me with that every time, damn it. Yeah, this funny. It is. Uh, he's not used just for men, but he has the blackest hair, so I always give him crap about that. But uh, you know he he wants to be able to run and play with his little girl. Uh, he's not going to be able to after Saturday night. Because if he does not back out, I'm telling you, a lot of people 
have you saw the new Steven Styles in the Battle Royal? Yep. But this tag match is going to be something all its own. And then January 7th, Steven Styles will be part of the UIW tournament to crown their number one contender for Josh Storm's U.S. title. So I've, there are several opportunities. The 7th and then the uh, – what is it? No, it's January 3rd at UIW in Temple, Georgia. Right. And then you have the 17th at Carrollton, Georgia for Peach State. And then you have the 31st for Global Championship Wrestling. Oh, and by the way, for the record, I just read the post a minute ago. No, your illustrious commissioner doesn't want to talk about just one match. I've been letting the information out little by little. And no, I, no, I should have been the first thing you talked about. <laughs> that that cruise and spiral video has went viral, as it should. There, there's going to be great matches there. Uh, I'm kind of saddened for Michael Steele because Luke Gallows gets a shot at Scotty Blaze. Oh, wait a minute then. You haven't heard, have you? Uh oh. Speaking of Michael Steele, I'll go ahead and lay this one out there since we're making blockbusters. Let's do this. I will give you the complete rundown because I have it all in front of me right now, unless uh-huh. something has changed in the last 24 hours. Let's go. As I'm ready we, to hear this. As we all know, the GCW Middleweight Championship will be on the line. Cruise, Spiral, one on one in a ladder match. The GCW Heavyweight Championship will be on the line, which is the most recent matches I've been talking about. Micah Taylor, the number one contender, challenging the champion, AJ Steele. The Tag Team Championships will be on the line. The Five Star Fight Club defend against the Sevenfold Saints. The GCW Women's Championship will be on the line. The Island Girl, Tracy Taylor, taking on the Bullet Babe, Amber O'Neill. In a Tag Team Challenge match. From the foundation of professional wrestling, the circle of disrespect, the f- king of Florida, Francisco Chiazzo, and his tag team partner, the Emerald Emperor, Simon Says, we've got more damn nicknames than I do, hashtag human verb, taking on the dream chaser, Dylan Cook, and a special mystery partner. I'm looking forward to this. It's going to be fun. The kryptonite killer, Michael Steele, taking on... Xander Stone from oh, the oh, underground. No. Poor Xander. Poor Xander. <laughs> oh. Goodness gracious, love. <laughs> and Wick just made a reference to it. Representing the Bullet Club, Big Doc Gallows taking on Scotty Blaze one on one, and in a special attraction challenge match, the Latino Sensation Antonio Garza takes on the Mystic Mudbone. Holy crap. Poor Antonio. Poor Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for anybody who gets in the ring with Mudbone. Plus, not to mention, a lot more of your favorite GCW stars and personalities will be there. Of course, you know Wick's going to be managing the Sevenfold Sinks. Um, yours truly, Robert Cosper, Whitney Lee, all up at the broadcast position. Kaz and I will be doing play-by-play and commentary. Of course, you know GCW senior official Bernie Kawanowitz and David Kilgore will both be there. And a whole lot lot more and of course everybody's favorite gcw security team will be there as well j and j can go take a hike i'll take our guys any day of the week i'll take that security team over any quote-unquote security squad team whatever at any promotion because man uh, look when you have a security guard over there eating popcorn as i did at uiw there was a hobo run up at the end of uh, the tag team match and getting the besties face. And I've already told them January 3rd during that tournament, they better be on cue because I love the GCW security team. They, they are right there. If anything happens, Billy will eventually get in between whoever he needs to. <laughs> and he gets away from the merch table with Angie and uh, Amanda Braddock. He'll get up and he'll do his job when he needs to, but he knows all I got to do is give him that look and he better get his fat ass up. <laughs> But it really is. I mean, I think security is really overlooked at some shows. But when I show up, Lord have mercy on my soul, you better make sure you're on par not eating popcorn, not over there smoking a cigarette, the West Georgia auto auction. You better be over there doing your job because a fan gets within me. They touch me. I will. I was having this conversation last night. I'll punch a fan. I have fought several fans. (laughs) And given one I've heart attack. Six or seven fights. I've had chairs thrown at me. I've had people pull knives on me. I had an old lady hit me in the head with a brick in her purse at UIW in uh, 
Frankie Valentine's mom, uh, Doug Summer's wife, had to come over there and put her in a chokehold after I pushed the old lady down. I did push her down. I knew I loved her. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> she's amazing. I mean, she. we need her at security at some of these places. Really? She can sit with me. Yeah. Any day. Yeah. I need uh, security. She's, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, we made the reference Wednesday night about classic Freddie Blassie saying, you know, you're not getting heat unless they burn your car. Yeah. No, you're not getting heat unless an old woman hits you in the head, the back of the head, with a brick and a purse. I had no with idea. A brick she and was a... walking around, and I saw her kind of walk up out of my peripheral, and then she walked up, and I felt like a <laughs> on the back of my head. I turned around, and it was an old lady standing there. She pulls this brick out. I pushed her down. She's probably 242,000 years old. She was as old as Michael Jackson. As Mike Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> That piece of trash, man. It's been, yeah. Seven Season Beatings is, is a great name for this event because I'm telling you guys right now, Seasons Beatings is the operative word because it's going to be two days after Christmas and everybody has that frustration built up of being around their in-laws. Oh, God, yes. God knows how long. And you need to come out. In fact, last night we were at a wedding, uh, a friend of mine, Jeremy Hurst, uh, who's going to be at the event 27th. Uh, his brother walked over there to me, and I held the door for him like I always do. You know, I let Angie in, and then I let him and his wife come in. And he was like, well, thank you. I appreciate it. And he was like, you're welcome, sir. He recognized me. And see, I tell everybody, everybody's like, why do you dress so nice for an event, especially when the wedding, the groom was dressed in overalls and a Grateful Dead shirt, and the bride had a Beatles shirt on. I'm like, you never know who you're going to run into. And I'll be damned, Eddie. I swear to God. He's now coming. Him, yes. his son, and Jeremy Hurst. So that's three asses I've put in the seat. That's more than most "quote unquote" heavyweight champions at certain promotions. <laughs> oh, but so But that's true. why, because you never know who you're going to run into. You know this. You're always dressed to the T. Clyde Braddock's always dressed to the T. Seaman Styles always dressed to the T. That's one thing that uh, Damon Christopher, aka Damon Taz, and Johnny Slaughter pushed into my mind so much. But it goes back to high school. We used to have to dress nice for high school. I didn't wear a tie. But I dressed nice whenever we would go on the road. But, I mean, you, you have to look like a champion. You can't look like somebody that they might see in Walmart hanging out or somebody like, look at him. He's one of us. I'm not one of them. I am not one of the fans, plain and simple. That, I mean, you have to dress, dress to a T. Season feedings, just like I told that gentleman last night, you're, you're in for it. And especially with GCW now filming for TV, Man, it's time to act a fool. It' gonna get nuts. Oh yes, it is. It' gonna get crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, tell me I didn't just go for the old inflection pattern. Hold on, I have to see if I can hit this one more time, just for old times' sake. See, I don't know about you, but I think it' gonna get a little bit crazy mm -hmm. on the on December the twenty seventh, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm drinking this uh, drink. It's uh, I believe it's four, and it's called. Natural light. Okay. And so uh, I have to take a drink now that you said, if you will. Ooh, forgot about that one. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's it has been, been a while. while. It's been 50 days. <laughs> and there was, oh, speaking of there, oh, what is this? Stro 80, I think it's called. It's a 180 proof rum made in Austria. Um, I want this. Oh, man, you can keep that rum. If it's vodka, I'll definitely try it out. It's a 180 proof rum. I want this. Who knew the Austrians made rum? I, I had no idea. idea. I had no idea. So I I'm really like, ah, we make the rum. <laughs> and I go for governor. <laughs> Bacardi? We don't need no stinking Bacardi. We got straw. No relation to Stro Maestro from... <laughs> Say what? Stro 80? Yeah, I think it's what that's what it was called. I was watching a uh, Discovery Channel last night or Nat Geo and um they were talking about that because they were making a special drink that was um a flaming drink and I'm sitting back going, "Yeah, I'll watch the city of Birmingham go nuts on that one." Oh boy, I I've drank absence before, Marilyn Manson's absence and it was <laughs> I've had moonshine that uh <clears throat> tasted better than that. I'm good. Legal moonshine, yeah, legal. Hmm. I'm good. <clears throat> Put you, sorry, I had to sneeze and I fought it back. I'm going to put you on the spot for an advance notice. Because as we're heading into this coming weekend, which is going to be the last full weekend, I believe, because I know that To Be Determined is going to be on hiatus for two weeks for Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. 
at least I'm anticipating that at this point, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I didn't know what everybody's thoughts on Christmas Eve. I figured that definitely New Year's Eve. Uh, I was invited to, well, I don't know, I guess Brian invited us to take him about 15 different places last night. Oh, there you go. <laughs> like, Brian, I was like, you know, I, we have five kids. Mm-hmm. You know, we may be with them. You never know. People that don't have kids have no idea what it's like to have to schedule around. And then, um, well, some people do. They have kids and they don't give a crap. <laughs> I do. Yeah, the in-week programming, I know that um, Back to Basics um, 10 Count will be broadcasting on the 26th and the 30th. I did. Um, I just kind of looked at the situation going, I have a feeling that Wick is probably going to take Christmas Eve off from TVD for 24th. I didn't know about the 31st yet. I don't know. We may, you know, if, if I don't know. I know you like to party, so. Yeah, we may be getting crunk by 9 o'clock. You never know. <laughs> you know it's just, uh, if we have to take two weeks off, that's fine, because... This Wednesday, we're going to lay everything out on the line for the 27th, and hell, I may come on back to basics. You never know, Eddie. Yeah. It's always a surprise. I feel like Zoolander jumping out of the coal mine. Surprise! (laughs) Big shout-out. I want to give a big shout-out, and I know he'll never hear this, but Stephen Colbert. I'm going to miss him. I may cry Thursday night on his last episode. Is that Um, this week? Yes, sir. It's tonight's... uh, and I don't know, well, the clock, our clocks are set fast, so I've got uh, eight minutes until 10.30. But Stephen Colbert is one of those guys. He is one of my heroes, like I always say. You know, if there was three people sitting at the table that I could have throughout the history, it would be Mark Twain, Stephen Colbert, and Stephen Hawking. Yeah. Uh, those three I would love, you know, like, you know, they always ask that. But Stephen Colbert, to me, is our generation's version of Mark Twain. So big shout-out to Stephen Colbert. I've watched him. I haven't watched him since January of last year, unfortunately. But up until January of last year, I'd only missed seven episodes, period, of his Monday through Thursday show, The Colbert Report. So right. I'm happy that he's taken over for David Letterman. But, you know, it, it is sad to see him go. I'm, and I'm happy for Larry Wilmore, who's going to be doing the nightly show uh, in place of The Colbert Report. But, right. You know, it's it, he's one of those guys that he changed politics with his super PAC. Uh, he changed the way that people thought about, uh, well, hell, John Oliver got uh, last week tonight, you know, partly through Daily Show and Colbert Report. Yeah. So I, I'm really into that. I'm really expanding my mind. People are like, hey, did you see Raw? Did you see this? I actually watched a little bit of SmackDown tonight because it was live. Uh, Eric Rowan, that guy, the, the sky's the limit with him. I worry about Rowan because in my book, he seems like he's um, he's a little bit too reckless. Well, I, when you're that big, uh, I think is a controlled reckless or recklessness, and uh, I think Harper too. I mean, those guys are just great big men, and I think everybody that wants to be a big man should definitely, definitely watch those guys because there's no wasted motion. There was a match that I really wanted to see if you'd had a chance to watch, and you might be able to look it up on YouTube or HollywoodWrestling.com. And that was the cage match, which was broadcast last Wednesday on Championship Wrestling from Hollywood between Mikey O'Shea and Scrap Iron Adam Pierce. O'Shea, for a bigger guy, moves so effectively. And this is something that you and I have had discussions about before on the various shows and in person. If you are a bigger guy, not necessarily big show big, but a bigger guy. You have to be able to keep your move set inside that comfort range to where it looks right for you doing it. Well, I told Jacoby this four or five years ago when he came back to Anarchy. Uh, he was doing a lot of like almost high flying stuff, and I told Jacoby I pulled him aside because uh, Jeff Bailey and Reverend Dan had told me, "Hey, you know, he seems to connect with you. You know, talk to him." And that thank God that Reverend Dan and Jeff Bailey. We were just talking about this on the way home. Uh, they made me a manager. They taught me how to be a manager as much as Johnny Slaughter and Stupid D Clown, Damon Christopher, and Brian Alexander trained me as a wrestler. Uh, they trained me how to be a manager. And I learned so much under those guys. I told Jacoby, Jacoby, you're a big man. Wrestle as a big man. And that's why I tell everybody wrestle as a big man. If you're a big man, wrestle as a big man. Leave all the high flying stuff to the guys that do the high flying stuff that are smaller that can't do your big man stuff. And I love it. When a, when a big man wrestles as a big man. I mean, I'm not talking about like uh, Orion Bishop, Bam Bam Bigelow, uh, Clyde Braddock, those guys who are big guys, but they can do other things. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about big men. 
big, strong guys that, you know, don't have mat wrestling skills. Uh, they go up and they go to the top rope. Eric Rowan went to the top rope and won tonight with a splash uh, on Miz. And, I mean, it looked good. He did all big man stuff and then went up top. A splash is one thing. But to go up and hit a moonsault, yeah, Vader could hit a moonsault. But that was Vader, six foot four, 450 pounds. He was the exception to the rule to that. But he did power bombs. He did all this. He wrestled as a big man. If you're a big man, wrestle as a big man. That's why I like Michael Elgin. Michael El- Elgin and Chris Knox wrestled as strong guys, and they never went up top unless they could do something. Now, Chris Knox can do a moonsault. But why? Why do it if you don't have to do it? There's guys that have to do that. Right. Sami Zayn, those guys, they're high flyers because that's what they do. Oh, and big shout out, big shout out to Harper for doing a gator roll on the <laughs> Usos because I love that. That's going back to those wrestling. Those guys are like almost seven feet tall. Yeah. There. They say they're six foot eight, but they're bigger than six foot eight. I think uh, so. I huge. Yeah. I mean, but that's Kane. Kane is the big man I think that everybody needs to look at. Well, I mean, it's like for years, Scott Bigelow, Bam Bam Bigelow was that fusion of someone who was bigger in stature, bigger in girth, but could also move like a cruiserweight and make it look right. Yep. And Ryan Bishop and Clyde Braddock right there cut out of that same mold. Exactly. The thing is that they were wrestlers in high school. And I know you're I know what you're going to say when I say this, but if you haven't had a chance to catch what Kevin Owens Steen did last week on Takeover, he looked good. I've heard that. I've heard that the the revolution, I think is what it's called, NXT Revolution. Yeah, our evolution. Uh, people were saying that that's one of the best shows of the year. I've said it. NXT, those guys take what Ring of Honor do and make it in a WWE style. And they are doing wrestling that I love because it is mat wrestling. It's high flying. It's big man. It's, it's, it's You look at Rollins. You look at Bray Wyatt. You look at Ambrose. You look at, well, Roman Reigns is... Oh my goodness gracious alive, man. He is <laughs> people talk all the time about John Cena. Man, Roman Reigns is uh, three levels below John Cena. So eventually he's gonna all his flaws, he's got to add more to his arsenal. Holy crap. That Superman punch, I know they got it over Monday night. I saw the recap of him hitting the big show. It's just man. Yeah, I think that might I think that might have had some uh some extra starch in there. Tater it oh, might yeah. have been a spud. Well, you have to win this big show. Jesus Christ, you know big show's going to knock the hell out of you. Yeah, but but you look at his punches, his knockout punch is a real knockout punch. I don't yeah. give a man. I, I've, I've seen boxers. My, uh, my adopted brother was a boxer, and his dad was a boxer. Golden Gloves out of Chicago. And, of course, I mean, everybody's like, almost Golden Gloves. No, he was a Golden Glove boxer. And those guys, man, when they hit you, I mean, there's just you, – you have to. Yeah. I mean, you have to connect. Yeah, thing about it is, like I said, I think um, Reigns got a little bit too hyperactive on that Superman punch because if you noticed, uh, looked like Show spit something out of his mouth, and he just he looked at Reigns after he threw that tantrum, and I mean that was legitimate. I'm pissed. Oh yeah, and lo and behold, he just he, you could see that mouth forming the f bomb before they cut the camera off of him. And so it's like I'm wondering, I, I'm just sitting back going, you know. Sometimes you need to chill before you jump up in the air with all that exuberance to throw a punch like that because it can backfire in your ass and there may be a receipt in the future too, especially if, especially if he broke a tooth on that one. Not, you know there's going to be a receipt. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's Big Show. All he's got to do is throw one of those open-handed chops to the chest, cave that sternum all the way back to your spleen. Oh, boy. It's on. It really is. Now, I'm also one of the things I'm going to say, is as we're headed toward the final couple of weeks of the year, and I really can't believe I'm saying that 2014 is pretty much almost over. Got about two full weeks left, right at it, give or take. And, you know, everybody's talking about award shows and all that stuff. The American Country Countdown Awards were on last night. Kenny Chesney picking up the Groundbreaker Award, Lifetime Achievement kind of, sort of, and very well-deserved. Reba McIntyre getting a very special award. God, I would still love to go out with her. Sorry, that's a dinner date in my book. First and foremost, but think about it is I'm actually going to go ahead and pull back the cover on one right now and let you know that I'm actually going to say that Red Dragon, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. I've got to vote them tag team of the year on the national scene. They have done when they first got together as a team. 
I'm sitting back going, yeah, I'm not sure about this. But lo and behold, watching some of the matches that they have had over the last year, they have absolutely tore it up to hell and back. And not only have they looked good, but they've done tag team wrestling on a national scene the way it's supposed to be done. So I've really got to sit back and say this, with everything going on in WWE, with everything that's happened in Impact Wrestling, with everything now happening with NXT, as well as Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, and some of the other products that are trying to either get to national or are national on the way, or getting national exposure, my honestly, my tag team of the year right now has got to be Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly because of the way that they've handled this year. They've looked good in every outing they've had. Do you have I, go ahead. I've seen a limited amount of their stuff. They are good. I mean, to put a tag team together like that and for them to click on all cylinders, it's hard. They've done what a tag team should do and they keep getting better. Well, hell, my tag team of the year is Five Star Fight Club, believe it or not. <laughs> really? I mean, they've taken the titles from the Unlucky Charms on two different occasions and I mean, they are the reigning GCW Tag Team Champions for now. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be good. Like I said, I'm looking forward to this coming. Oh, by the way, advance notice. Ring of Honor's next major pay-per-view outing is going to be on Sunday, March 1. It's going to be emanating from Las Vegas, Nevada. There's a party at Eddie's house, and you're invited. We're definitely going to make that. Believe Look, that. Keep everybody healthy. We'll be good. Take- oh, no. <laughs> Do me a favor. Let's go ahead and take it in. Um, Wick, going to go and throw it to you on this one. Uh, since you didn't get a chance to do them on um, Sunday, go for it. Last call and shameless plugs. Hey, last call is this. Season's beating is the 27th. Make sure you're there. If you're in West Georgia, East Alabama, that is the preeminent. Uh, like I said before, I might as well go ahead and be king of Alabama because GCW runs this place. We run this town. And if you want to call me Frank White, go right ahead. You can. Contact me at Wicked Nemesis on Twitter, Enoch Tessarian on Facebook, The Sevenfold Saints, The Merchants of Death, The Wicked Nemesis, and The To Be Determined Show all have Facebook fan pages. Give us a like. Give us a share. We'd really appreciate it. So Wednesday night, 9 p.m. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8, well, no, 10 Eastern, 9 Central, The To Be Determined Show, we go live. And when it's uploaded, it's a beyond cast quote unquote podcast. So and you'll be there, I guess, this Wednesday, hopefully. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be back in the chair. And of course, the grand design, Clyde Braddock. It's going to be a hell of a show. Clyde's birthday Saturday. Uh oh. And we were going to try to make that trip out to Monroe till we realized it was uh two hours away and you have to go through downtown Atlanta, so they add an extra thirty minutes to that. Eh. Yeah, oh yeah. So we may not be going to his event. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, but uh Go out and support local independent wrestling. Tell you what, if you're up for it, want to pop into Birmingham this coming Saturday night, check out the uh, Southeast Subs Roller Derby uh, charity event. Dude, I just heard about that. The Harlem Globetrotters. I haven't seen the Harlem Globetrotters since 1985 in Dallas, Texas. I saw him here in Birmingham about seven years ago, but it's been a while. So like I said, and Tammy Joe has been kind enough to say that um, we've got some passes for BR. So I'm definitely going to be taking advantage of that. So uh, real quick, let me run this down. Uh, you just heard about the To Be Determined show tomorrow night, December the 17th. On the 18th, Cause and Effect present the Thursday Night Radio Throwdown, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Saturday the 20th, 10 a.m. Central, Beyond Ringside Saturday Showcase, the 21st, the trifecta is back. Beyond Ringside Live, 5.30 p.m. Central. Wrestle Rage with Smart Rage and Stan should be returning this coming Sunday night, the 21st, at 8 p.m. Central. And at 10 p.m. Central, the all-new edition of the Midnight Black Mass, starring the Reverend Dan Wilson. Keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com, at BeyondRingside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash BeyondRingsideLive. And for me personally, I look forward to seeing everybody this coming Friday night. The holidays continue, but the party always continues on Friday nights, 9 p.m. at Buffalo Wild Wings in Alabaster. And like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody this coming Saturday night at the Zamora Shrine Temple for the Southeast Subs Charity Roller Derby event. It's going to be a lot of fun. At Fast Eddie Lane on Twitter, follow at your own risk. Fast Eddie Lane, L-A-Y-N-E dot com. 
Tammy Joe, thank you for coming on tonight. Definite pleasure to have you on board. Looking forward to this coming Saturday to Gene Jackson, Donnie Primetime, Ace Haven. Thank you all for coming on board. Best, um, my absolute very best for this coming Friday night. Pro South sixth anniversary show in Piedmont, six twenty seven Southern Avenue. It's gonna be some fun. Four. Special guest and impromptu tag team partner tonight, the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. Hey, big shout out to Pro South. They made it six years. Yes, they did. Making another six. Do me a favor. For Angie Travis, smile and say hi and wave. Hello. See, it worked. (laughs) This is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying, let's run it light speed. Adios, das vananya, hasta luego, off leaders, and chao, say ganada, adu, 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 ad